Hey guys, what's up? It's Darkmech here and welcome back to another video. Today we're covering off a Taldazar in my Mythic Plus guides. Now these guides are mainly designed for newer tanks moving into the plus 10 bracket uh, to be comfortable in dealing with the new season of Fix Awakened. Uh, what kind of route to take, what to do with your obelisks, how to handle them and how to handle and manage some of the pulls throughout this dungeon. It is not a full dungeon overview, but it is obviously uh, aimed at arming you with the confidence uh, to get through the dungeon, to uh, have a route, I suppose, uh, a general route that you can use because this route does work on Fortified and Tyrannical. Uh, in a Taldazar, you will always get one lust on a trash pack and two lusts on a boss. You will never get three lusts on a boss, so just keep that in mind. You will see lots of different pathways, but this, this is a pretty solid path for um, both Tyran and Fortified and every affix that you'll kind of encounter throughout this dungeon. So getting into this one guys, uh, as I said, it's not a full dungeon overview. I'm not going to cover off absolutely everything, but I am going to tell you all the important stuff. So uh, this week was Fortified, Sanguine, Grievous and Awakened when I did this. So we're going to go down to the left. Now we do this every single time now, uh, and we're going to go into this first double pack here. Now the two important things in this double pack here are the Augur and the Confessor. Now the Augur is going to do a uh, cast called Fiery Enchant that you have to interrupt. If you don't, if you let it go through and it casts and it just keeps channeling, there will be fiery crap all over the ground and it will have a very high likelihood of wiping your group because people will get hit by it. So make sure that you kick the Fiery Enchant. Have someone ready to kick Fiery Enchant. The Confessor is the uh, next most important mob, or well, it's actually on par. It will uh, cast a Mending Word, a heal. You need to make sure that you kick the heal. Someone kicks the heal. Someone also needs to make sure that they kick the Mantle, which is a barrier. I think it's a uh, Mantle of Bonsamdi or Bonsamdi's Mantle, or it's something along those guides. It's a massive barrier. If the barrier goes off, everything inside it is immune to CC. So you can't stun, you can't grip it out, you can't interrupt. It's horrific. So make sure that you have the Augur uh, interrupt and the Confessor's two kicks sorted out before your group engages this. So we're gonna move into this double pull. The last thing I'm gonna mention is healers. If you can get up on this little ledge here, what that will do when the group is fighting them is means the guard, uh, the juggernauts won't actually charge off. So a healer getting up there uh, can make this pack a hell of a lot easier as well. As the tank, just make sure that you're not dragging it too far back this way towards the stairs where we just came from. Otherwise, you'll uh, outrange your healer and they won't be able to heal you. If they have to jump down, juggernaut will charge, can kill them on high keys. So moving into this first pack here, I've got the auger as a focus interrupt. Uh, Zai's gone and jumped up on the ledge there and there's the mending word from the confessor so we've kicked that. Augur's fiery enchant's gone off so we've kicked that uh, and pretty much once we've once we've got them down there goes the mantle so we got to kick on that. Augur's nearly dead, confessor's dead so we're pretty much safe now. Uh, with any spare kicks you have make sure you're kicking the wildfires from the Augur as they will do quite a bit of damage. With sanguine just make sure that you can, uh, you're can you paying attention as the tank to make sure you're moving the mobs just before they're going to die. Uh, so you're watching where you're dropping sanguine obviously. Bolstering wise, um, necrotic wise, just Always play to your affixes, guys. In terms of you don't always have to stand there and face tank everything. There's nothing wrong with being a tank and running away like a little bitch. Um, staying alive is far more important than feeling like you're standing there and taking it all to the face. So first obelisk here, we're going to drag this up to the priest. Now, something worth noting uh, on with Awakened is the Awakened obelisks will interact with the affixes of the week. So these tentacles... Uh, will drop Sanguine, they will bolster, they will enrage, uh, same as, you know, every other thing, like the little flesh fiends will stack necrotic and things like that. So just keep that in mind. The Sanguine from the other realm doesn't affect this realm, so you can run through all of these Sanguine puddles in this realm. However, these tentacles will drop Sanguine and you can't run through them, obviously, in this realm. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kill uh, whatever we can down here, and as uh, we get sort of cut off by the purple shit and things like that, we're just going to move up around this corner and we're going to continue snapping the tentacles up. We're going to kill them when uh, we got a three stack there and they were all next to each other. So you can see they're in Gweenie here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leg it up the stairs a little bit further. So they snap up here. I'm going to move the blob away from them so they're not covered in purple stuff so they can actually get the tentacle down. Then we're just going to kill that last tentacle and then we're going to finish this and we're going to come out of this blob in the priest area. Now what I'm going to do in this bit, uh, what I wanted to do was do a four pack. So I wanted to do this priest, the priest over here and the two by the stairs. What happens is, never do this, okay? 
Never run and jump down this little gap. Run across the face of the stairs here where it's even up the top. Because what's going to happen and what does happen is this priest is going to come down on this stair line. It's going to snap to here and then it's going to evade bug out. The problem is it's still casting and it's still doing damage on us. We just can't hit it and we can't do anything with it. So we make a few attempts here where we try to line a sight and things like that. It just doesn't work. It eventually ends up resetting itself. So I'm just going to grab this third priest now. So remember, I wanted to do a four pull here. Again, with the auger, make sure you're kicking the fiery enchant. Spare kicks on the wildfires. Watch the juggernaut because the juggernaut is going to charge. What you can do with the juggernauts is you can actually fully stack as a group and every time it goes to do its charge, you can stun it. However, it does obviously require a little bit of coordination. People need to stack on your tank and you all need to move together. So you can see here that priestess is still casting on Zai and now it's finally uh, just, it's finished its transfusion cast and now it's gone back and reset where it was. With the priest guys, when they cast this transfusion, get in a blood puddle. Blood puddle's red, sanguine's purple. That's how you always know the difference between them. Make sure you get in a puddle with them. If you get into a puddle, it will absolutely melt itself and it will die. The only weeks you won't want to do that is perhaps bolstering weeks if you don't want to bolster something dangerous in a pool. Now, next, what we're going to do, this is the best way to do this pull here. So we're going to pull, and you can just do these two here and then do the priest to both priests on side with this middle pack. It's not really too bad. I wanted to avoid it for sanguine week just so I didn't have extra things in there with transfusion and that, but um, it's generally really, it's generally safe to do this all. Um, what we're going to do, you will need a rogue or a hunter to do this. Otherwise, you can just go and fight it normally, no worries. But what we're going to do is we're going to snap everything up onto this brazier. Now, to do that, if you come over to this bit here, if you jump in the middle here, you can't actually jump through, but there's like a little invisible ledge that you can get up onto this little bit here, and then you can get onto the brazier. Then what you're going to have is a hunter or a rogue trix or MDU, and they're going to pull the entire middle pack to you, and it's going to snap up here. So this is by far the easiest way to do this. Again, there's no charges this way or anything to worry about. Your DPS can just stand there and merc it. The biggest thing you need to worry about, of course, is the auger, the purple uh, nameplate in there. You have to make sure that you are kicking the fiery enchant when it goes off uh, and spare kicks onto the wildfire. Now, this pack will get a little different come uh, teaming weeks. In teaming weeks, there'll be a confessor in here, so you will need to kick the mantle again and you will need to kick the mending word along with making sure that you kick the auger. So you can see here, they're getting lower. When they get low-ish, like to that 15, 10% area, I'm gonna bail off the side. They're all gonna snap down, get a kick on the fiery enchant, and then I'm just gonna kite them away. Now you can see, this is why I didn't originally wanna do uh, the other priest up there, why I wanted to pull them away, because this one was stuck in a transfusion in the sanguine. Um, any other week, it's really not too much of an issue, and it, it even really wasn't much of an issue in this one. Um, so we're just finishing them up. So as soon as, uh, obviously, if it's not Sanguine Week, you can just stand up there and finish them all off. It's not an issue. Um, but obviously with Sanguine, the last thing you want to do is damp, dump Sanguine up there and have a bunch of mobs standing in it. So we're finishing them, and then we're on to the Priestess boss. Now, Priestess, uh, fairly stock standard. Biggest things you want to do in these ones is figure out ways to not waste time DPSing the ads. So we've got a blind and a roots here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill the first one. We're then going to roots the second ad that pops, and then we're going to blind the third ad that pops. And that way we don't have to worry about killing the ads at all. We can just focus all our damage onto Priestess Alunza and we can just get through the fight ASAP. So if you don't, uh, other options you've got are uh, traps from hunters, uh, paralysis from monks works as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Otherwise, roots, blind. That's, that's, that's pretty much all I can think of. I may have missed something there, but I don't think I have. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're managing them. You can see the second ads pop there. We've got roots on it. Then we'll collect blood again, and then the third ad will not even pop. We don't have to worry about it because it's dead. Um, so moving down here now, we this is this is really idle. I mean, we time this run, but this is if you ever want to ruin a run, this is how you do it. All right. So fire, don't run too far forward like this. So someone just ran down, got off their mount, and pulled the bottom pack. I'm stuck behind fire. So then I run down. I'm into this. Now you watch two people backpedal and die in the fire so non non amazingness so just make sure that you take real care in going down the fire because we actually like we, we kill these sort of mobs we, we get down to like two and then we die 
and then I run back and like we had other people still fighting it and we we come out of it but like messy and we come out of it with six deaths uh so we'd lose 30 seconds automatically from that the run back time that 30 seconds probably turns into like a minute and a half to two minutes time that you waste off your key by doing things like that now things like that absolutely happen don't tilt on it but that's the stuff that you want to avoid happening now next we're going to go and we're going to snap these double swords and again you do this on every week as the tank if you come over here onto this little lip here, you can actually run up it and then you can just jump. You don't have to like try and jump on it. You can just get up onto this lip and sort of jump up the side here. So if you, yeah, I, I kind of scuff it there, I'm up on the lip and then jump and you're up here. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to have your rogue or your hunter again, tricks or MD you, and they're going to pull these two packs to you. Now, if you don't have that ability, uh, you can just uh, drop a D&D on them. You can use Death's Caress to tag them and they will pull it up to you. You won't be able to get the far pack even with Crucible of Flame. Crucible of Flame has a pretty awesome range for snapping, um, but otherwise you will need a rogue or a hunter again to get if you want to do the double. So again, Dugs is heading off this way. We're going to snap these two packs up to us now when everyone is back. Everyone's back and ready and we've got our food buff again. So we're going to snap these up. I'm just dropping D&D to make sure I get uh, threat sort of straight away because everyone's just going to blast. And then we need, again, the Sky Screamer, you need to make sure that you have a kick on their terrifying screech there. Otherwise, everyone's going to get feared and you're going to have a bad time. Sanguine goes to drop. Make sure you jump down, finish up the Sky Screamer. That's pretty much it. Now, we have uh, a minute left on our hero. So remember, we heroed that first double pull. We do this every week kind of the same way because what we're going to do now is we're going to drop down and we're going to hero on Rezan. Now, it, regardless on higher keys, Rezan is pretty nasty on Fortified and he's even nastier on Tyrannical. So generally, always want to have hero for Rezan. So the way we do it is we hero on the first uh, double pull when we go left. We then drop down, we use our second hero on Rezan, and then we use our last hero on Yasma with Obelisk. So uh, Rezan had a really bad pat here, so we're just going to do the two Sky Screamers. Sort out your kicks, make sure you kick the terrifying kicks and that uh, Screeches, and that's about it. If you're really bold and really awesome, you can pull the Screeches onto Rezan as long as you've got your interrupts. Um, if not, just play it safe. You can catch Rezan over the other side, and we just start up at this pillar here instead of over at the stairs. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to hero Rezan. Biggest thing on Rezan, uh, as the tanks guys, watch out for this big dot, the serrated teeth. It hurts a lot. Um, if people run over purple patches, it uh, spawns raptors. We've done it for uh, the rogues, uh, wit stacks, obviously. But uh, just, just be aware of that. And as a tank, really make sure you've got cooldowns managed out for uh, the serrated teeth. Now, one thing that you can do here, you can see he doesn't do a pursuit. If you're Alliance and you're in a group with Night Elves, otherwise you've got like uh, rogues with Fain and Vanish on Horde side. But if you are a uh, alliance character when he uh night elf even when he goes to do pursuit if you get out of range and someone uses a shadow meld it just cancels out the cast and you can go on dpsing him so you can see chewie's uh meld is now on cooldown so uh easiest way to kind of manage that and just ensure that you don't have um to be moving kind of back and forth and lose someone's damage on the boss because they're running away um, with the terrifying visage, his fear, as a DK, you can AMS it. As a warrior, you can berserk a rage. If there's a shaman in their group, they can drop a, um, a tremor totem. So again, you don't have to run out. You don't have to worry about losing any of that uptime. So you see this one's on Clary. Clary's going to get out of range. She's going to use her meld. So just make sure that you get out of range with it as well. So if you can watch this, Clary goes off to the right here and then uses meld. So, and then it cancels it back to DPS. So easiest way to do that. We're just going to let him take off down the end and kill him down here. And then we're going to get up here. Now, if we hadn't have been ahead of time and Rezan had a bad pat, we would have been going back up the other side to do the two screechies because we would have dropped off the bridge. We would have actually dropped off uh, this bridge here and we would have gone straight into Rezan down here. We wouldn't have done the two screechies. Once we finished Rezan, we would have gone up and got the two screechies. So... Because we've killed Rezan over this side, we're going to go up the other side and we're going to use Shroud, but we generally don't pull this uh, pack of swords that we're about to go past. So we generally skip these, all right, on my route, and the route will be in general. But what we do here is we would generally... Oh, wait, this is I fuck up here. It's so bad. Um, so what we do is we're going to Shroud because we were going to snap the two sword packs up on the bridge. So we were never going to pull this, okay? We were never going to pull this. We were going to pull this one on purple and this one up here. 
However, watch this bit of genius. Oh, I go. That's, that's not what you want to do. So as a result of that, because I cannot get back up now, we just have to kill this pack of swords here. Generally speaking, you want to avoid them. Unfortunate. That happens though. With the swords, just watch out. They jump. They do a lot of damage on fort. Stuns. Kill them. Pretty much it. Uh, so then we're going to go up onto our pur uh, purple pack here that we were going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run out and I'm going to snap them. Dugs is going to grab this pack for me over here and we're just going to kill them here. So really unfortunate that I ended up falling off the spot and that happens. Like the only thing you can do is practice it and hope that it doesn't happen, but it does happen every now and again. It's just the way it goes. So again, we actually didn't need that pack of skyscrapers down there. Um, but it, it, it doesn't matter. We just, we had no choice in the end and we had to get them. So we're killing this one here again, making sure we kick the fear. And then we're going up to the right side now. Now there's always a stealthy mob down here. You can see the stalker just hit me then. Uh, so I am going to take this stalker up. We're going to go into this honor guard pack. If the honor guard is proving really difficult for your group, you can control undead on it as well and just take it out of the pack. If it's too much of an issue, it doesn't net you a lot of DPS though. So just be aware of that. We're just waiting on the shield bearers to come back in here, these two padding shield bearers, because we want the stalker, the guard, and the two shield bearers. Guard is always the focus target, as it does an absolute ton of damage. It spews out all of this green shit, and it's quite horrendous. Now, these uh, shield bearers of Zul will cast the ball walk of Juju. You need to get stuns on that, otherwise you can't grip them out. The stun just stays, or they move with the stun. It doesn't cancel it. And whilst everything is in it, it takes reduced damage. Big thing with the Zul ones, guys, on Necrotic Weeks and things like that, where you have to kite away, or even just when you get in danger on these packs and you have to kite away, they will shield bash the closest target to them. If it is a high Fort Weaker, if they are bolstered and you are too far away and there is a melee hitting them, they will get shield bashed in the face to death. So just be aware of that. So you can see here, shield bash is going off. You generally want to make sure the shield bash is hitting you, or if you're running away and a DPS is going to get shield bashed, they have some kind of mitigation. Uh, set up to reduce the damage of that so they don't die. So you can see another ball walk goes up, just making sure you're using your gouges, your stuns. If they are full DR, remember that you can gouge them and that's the way you'll get around that if you have a rogue. Otherwise, we're just going to finish up these shield bearers and then we're going to do this next pack here into the obelisk. So again, uh, this one's got another Oni Guardian, which is your focus. There's a Witch uh, Doctor in here as well. You need to make sure you get kicks on the Witch Doctor. So the Witch Doctor will do a Venom Blast. Uh, fortified, they're dangerous, bolstered, they're even worse. So just make sure you are nuking down the Witch Doctor. If you can, nuke down the Witch Doctor, then break the totem or have the Witch Doctor nearly dead by the time you break the totem from Cleave and then get onto the Honor Guard and kill the Honor Guard. So same stuff with them guys. Uh, shield bashes again, same kind of stuff. Then we're moving into the Obelisk. Don't go too close to the stairs. There is two stealthy mobs that pack up and down here and we do not want them. So we're going into this Obelisk here. This one is the Flesh Render one. With this one, uh, just be really careful. These can absolutely own. So I'm, I generally mass grip them if I don't need mass grip coming up uh, onto uh, the Obelisk, the, the Chaos thing here, just so I can get threats straight away uh, and they don't smack anyone else in the face. The Flesh Fiends will put a stacking debuff on you. That hurts as well. Wouldn't uh, recommend going above seven stacks on them. Generally does hurt quite a bit. With the fear, you can AMS the fear before it goes off. Means that you won't get feared. Warriors, again, you can Zerker Rage. If you've got a uh, Shadow Priest or a Disc Priest in your group, you can clump up for Master Spell on the first one. Monks can revival it off as well to get rid of everyone's fear. Um, but again, if you're just going to cop the fear, make sure you've got, if you're low on health, that you use a cooldown before because you will get feared away, so you'll get slapped in the back if he's near you. Otherwise, just start legging it. So I'm going to pull this into Vocal's room, and we're going to kill this in Vocal's room, and we're going to come out here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, same stuff in regards to how Vocal works. Just make sure that you're killing your totems evenly. Uh, make sure it's the tank that you're following him around so you can get a kick or if he leaps away from you, you call for someone to kick it. Make sure that that's, uh, make sure people are aware of what's going on because you don't want the cast to go through. And then we're going to push all our totems before reanimate goes off and then we're going to go into the actual fight itself. Now, big thing with Vocal is don't move too, too fast, okay? So it's, it's not a speedway race. Just as the green shit drops, you need to just slowly move. Now, Vocal will uh, cast Noxious Stench, so you can see here it's coming up. You just want to make sure that you've got a kick lined up for it. Noxious Stench starts, kick it, keep moving. Uh, on Grievous, this is a fairly dangerous boss as well. Um, 
So yeah, anything you can do to minimize damage on a Grievous Vocal Week is definitely advisable as your healer will be having a hard enough time. So we're just moving slowly here. Now what we actually do is we cut fairly early. The reason we cut fairly early is because this gate over here that I'm running past, if you're down, if you're down like on this gold line, Torment in a jar will pull them through the gate. If you're facing the wrong way, you can see how my back is faced and I'm pointing in this way. That's so Twilight Devastation doesn't beam off in some random direction and pull through the gate because that actually happens. So just be aware of that. So we're just going to get past the gate, keep dragging him up and around, and then he dies. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to shroud out now. Something in my nose. Now, if you do not have a shroud, you can get somebody to run these mobs off to the right. You can all just then run out here. They can die. You can mass res, okay? We have a rogue though, so we're going to shroud. So we're going to shroud out of here, down the side, and we're going to drop off. Now, there are two stealthies on this stairs. Because it's uh, a fortified sanguine week and we've got plenty of time, we're just playing it safe. So we're going to do the two stealthies on the stairs. Then we're going to take him into the bottom pack. If you're feeling frisky, you can, of course, take these two stealthies into the bottom pack uh, and kill them. The biggest thing in the bottom pack is there are two witch doctors. You need to make sure that you're interrupting the venom blast, especially on bolstering, especially on fortified weeks. Uh, these stalkers will put venom strike on you. It's a dot. It ticks for a bit of damage, so just be aware of that. Otherwise, you shouldn't have too many problems with that. Sanguine weeks, try and kill things at the same time so you don't have to move for sanguine. Moving down into this bottom pack, you've got two Zools. So again, range for shield bashes, witch doctors for kicks. Just make sure you're getting them. So we're going to kill them. Again, watching where we're dropping Gweenie. And then I am going to run up and get on this spot. So this is a mirror. This is a mirror of the uh, other side. Remember when we were over that other side, how I got onto this lip and got up here? It's a mirror snap, exact same thing. However, on the other side, there was one Sky Screamer and two Swords. In this one, there's two packs of Swords and two Sky Screamers. So I'm going to get up onto this lip. I'm going to jump up here. We've got a Sap on this one. If you can, you can imprison the back one over here so you don't have two Sky Screamers. Again, it just depends on what you want to do. If you've got kicks, it's not a huge issue. So we've snapped one pack of Swords. Uh, Dugs has tried to snap the other pack and they've kind of kind of gone onto Zai from healing aggro from that distance and then slowly snapped up. So it was a bit bit of a scuffed snap. Uh, I don't know what happened, but it was a little bit of a scuffed snap. But again, just make sure uh, if they are in Gweenie or whatever, you're using your line of sight tools, grips, typhoons, and things like that, just to make sure they're out. Uh, and yeah, so we've killed that. And then we've got two uh, skyscrapers to go. So we imprisoned this one, sorry, on the switch. And then we snapped that one. Again, just make sure you've got your kicks, and then we're just going to do these two Sky Screamers together. And once they're dead, we're going to have Dugs or anybody go and run off this middle pack here. So they're going to run the middle pack off, and they're going to run it that way. Remember the obelisk near Vocal that we took? We took to when we... Sorry, there's there's two on each side. There's one on Vocal's side. There's one on the left pack where we took the first uh, obelisk up to Priest. They're going to go uh, and meld or vanish, and they're going to get in that portal and run back here in the other realm. We're just going to run to this obelisk here. We're going to get in it, and we're going to take the tank buster up to Yasma. So you can see here, Dugs went down. He's gone up to the one that we just took uh, into Vocal's room. He's going to get in that, and then he's going to run all the way back down and join us. Now, with the tank buster... Uh, Obviously, as I say in every single video, generally try and minimize the uh, amount of face tanking you do while you have the Spirit Breaker debuff on you. It will hurt. Make sure you're rolling cooldowns, though, if you are going to stand there and take it. He will chase you for a little bit. He'll then stop and cast a Dark Fury. Make sure it's a big purple circle that you don't stand in the Dark Fury. Now, in regards to the other Obelisk, there are, there are, two, there are two options here. One is that you always fight Yasma with an Obelisk, which is generally... The preferred way to do this um and, and it's something that's worth getting comfortable with much like freehold uh however you never want to fight the pack that is outside of vocal's room where the last obelisk is it's the double honor guard witch doctor pack you never ever 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 want to fight that what you can do though if you do not want to do an obelisk with the last boss is you can have much the same way we just ran that middle pack off you get out of Vocal's room, be it that you run the pack off and then your group gets out and someone melds, uh, you shroud out or someone runs them off, you get out, they die and then you mass res them. Someone can then, uh, from your group, not your tank or your healer, can run the double honor guard uh, witch doctor pack, which is around the obelisk off. You can all run and get into 
uh, the obelisk up near Vokal's room. And then you can go from there. So I'm just going to rewind it so I'm not sort of talking at you if you have no idea what I'm talking about. If we come... Okay, so we never actually see it. Here it is over here. See where the orb weaver is? This is where the other obelisk is. So if you didn't have a shroud out of here, you could have someone run them off. Your group runs out here. They won't pull aggro off. This is all gone out and they run out. They die or they meld or they whatever. You mass res them. They meld. When next, your next would run off this pack over here. Your group, your tank and your healer can't do it. They would go and get in the obelisk, which whatever DPS are left. If that DPS can't drop aggro or whatever, they would just die. They would release at the start. They would run and get in an obelisk and they would meet you with this wherever you were going to kill it. If you're doing this path, you would just be killing this spider, this orb weaver over here, like up the top, because then you would drop down onto the stairs. So if that person was running off them so you could all get in the obelisk, they would die, go jump in the obelisk near Vokal and they would run back and they would meet you here to kill it. Hopefully that makes sense. So back to Yasma, we've elected to do an obelisk with Yasma though, so this is how we're doing it. And again, I would suggest you try and get comfortable with doing this kind of stuff, because the higher keys you go, this is generally what is going to happen to save time. So into Yasma, uh, and this this is the Orb Weaver. So again, Orb Weaver is always two kicks. Now this gets a little dicey because you always need to have one person kicking Yasma. Racking pain can't go through. So with the Orb Weaver, there'll be the two casts and then there'll be a break. So you just need to make sure that your other melee or the other three melee in this group, which is really fortunate because we have uh, lower, CD, uh, lower CDs on kicks, have their shit worked out on the Orb Weaver. I, as the tank, am always just staying on Yasma and make sure I'm getting racking pain. Um, and the melee DPS are working out what's going on. Now, if you have more ranged in your group than melee, some casts are going to go and are going to go through. You're just going to have to figure out a way to wear that and just burn it down really quickly if you elect to do a uh, obelisk with Yasma. However, just make sure that the racking pains never go through as that will really cause issues to your group. Um, as the tank here, you just want to try and keep the spiders clumped up and you want to move Yasma around the room. The important thing is to try and make sure that the spiders are clumped up and you're kicking every racking pain. She'll do a sever cast, a skewer cast, sorry, which hits you for quite a bit of damage. So just make sure you've got a, um, a cooldown or something like that or a way to recover from those hits. They will spike you fairly hard and just keep moving around the room. So you can see I'm just trying to keep the spiders clumped up. When they move, I try and move Yasma back over. If they're all spread out, you can actually duck yourself into this king's restroom and they will kind of clump up and then you can come back out and keep going again. Um, main thing is to make sure that your group always has somewhere to run. So they're going into king's rest uh, area right now. They're going to kill those and then I'm going to drag Yasma back over towards this obelisk and everyone's just going to come out and the spiders are going to file in behind. It's pretty much a rinse repeat this whole fight. It's a long fight. It does get hectic. The main thing that you want to try and do though as the tank is keep these spiders clumped up behind her. If your group is running up the stairs, it is super easy because your group can jump off the stairs when the spiders come to the right. The spiders then have to pat back down the stairs and go around. So easiest way to do that, but just don't race around the platform. Just wait for the spiders to move and then move Yasma. When they're non-active, just kind of chill. Don't go too far. When they reactivate again, just move a little bit. Uh, be watching the Soul Rend cast as well. So your group has a place to run before Soul Rend goes off. So if we were over here and there's all these spiders and Soul Rend was about to go off, I'd be jetting it over to this corner. We're going into the King's Rest area again, so I don't have to worry about it because there's a lot of clear space. Otherwise, just going to keep moving and that's pretty much it and then she dies um so that is it guys hopefully that helps you out hopefully uh, a lot of that made sense and if you didn't know some of those things that's really helped you out in moving through this key a Taldazar has become slightly more difficult with uh, awakened i think than it used to be um just because of obelisk placement and things like that but if you have any questions at all hit me up in the comments below otherwise thank you very much for checking out the guide uh, like comment subscribe come find me on twitch come join the discord i'll see you all next time see you fam Shadow.